Hey there! Welcome to our seventh module. In this part of the lecture, we will compare the organs associated with the male reproductive system of the different domestic animals. At the end of this presentation, each student should be able to compare the morphology of the testes of the different domestic animals, review the gonadal duct system, identify the present male sex organs per animal, and identify the type of penis present per animal. The male reproductive system is generally composed of the testis and its gonadal duct system, the male accessory glands, and the penis. The function of the system is the same among animals and that is to produce viable spermatozoa that can fertilize an ovum from the female counterpart for the perpetuation of life. The general feature is the same, but modification can be observed especially in the gross appearance and location of the organs. For example, in most mammals, the testes are located outside the main trunk or body of the animal and enclosed inside a sac called scrotum. This is in contrast to birds with testes located within the silomic cavity inside their body. This, among others, will be tackled and compared in this module. Let us begin with the external appearance and location of the testicle. As you can see here, we divide the animal based on their location. Dogs, ruminants, and horse have testes located at the inguinal region. Testicle of pig is anatomically located at the perineal region, while in cats it is located subanally. We can also compare the orientation of the testes. In male dogs and in stallion, it is horizontally oriented, while in ruminants, the testes are oriented vertically. Now let us describe them per animal. We begin with the dog. The scrotum is usually pigmented and covered with few hairs as shown here. In stallion, the skin of the scrotum is thin with few fine hairs and mostly pigmented. It is shiny and oily because of the secretions of the sebaceous and sweat glands. In bulls, the scrotum is long and pendulous and divided into left and right halves by a septum. Please note the sparse hair in large ruminant, which is in contrast with the small ruminants with very hairy scrotum. In boars, the scrotum has few hairs and also divided by a deep groove into left and right halves. In tomcat, the scrotum is covered with hairs. Testes are originally located intra-abdominally. In the later stage of embryonic development, the testes migrate into the vaginal process covered by the scrotum to assume its adult position. This descent of the testes is guided by a structure called gubernaculum. The descent varies per animal. Descent happens before birth in ruminants and in pig, it is shortly after birth in carnivores, while it is around 10 to 14 days after birth in horse. In birds, the paired testes are located within the silomic cavity. They are situated on the left and right sides of the body, occupying a dorsal position near the cranial renal division and the abdominal air sac. Testicular descent does not occur in birds. The size and development of the testes vary considerably with season, climatic factors, age, and breed. During the breeding season, the volume of the testes increases substantially. Now let us review the basic gonadal duct system. This is the duct system where the formed spermatozoa pass throughout of the body. As we recall, the sperm is produced at the seminiferous tubules in particular at the convoluted seminiferous tubule. Then it will become the rete testis to the efferent duct and exit as the epididymal duct. The epididymis is composed of the head, body, and the tail. The epididymal duct will then exit as the deferent duct and to the urethra where it will move out from the body during ejaculation. In birds, the deferent duct enters the urodium of the cloaca. In general, different animals, both mammals and birds, have the same gonadal duct system. Variation can be seen on the length, especially in the epididymal duct. Here is a table showing the length of the epididymis of different male animals. As you can see, 
The larger the animal, the longer is the duct. The accessory sex glands are located along the pelvic portion of the urethra. Their presence varies between the species and can include the ampullary gland, the vesicular gland, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral or the cowper's gland. In this slide, we can see the accessory sex gland of a bull. All mentioned four glands are present. Notice that the vesicular gland is large enough and can be palpated transrectally. The prostate gland is composed of both compact and the disseminate part. However, this is not true in small ruminants as only the disseminated part is present. The bulbourethral gland is small and like a size and shape of a cherry. Here we compare the accessory sex glands of male carnivores like dogs and cats. Both animals have ampullary and prostate glands. The prostate glands of both animals have vestigial disseminated part, but the compact part is large and globular. It is so extensive in this species that it entirely surrounds the urethra as shown here. In addition, cats have a very small and spherical bulbourethral gland. This sex gland is absent in dogs. Note that both dogs and cats lack the vesicular gland. Here is a schematic illustration of the male accessory sex glands of a boar. Note that ampullary gland is missing. However, there is a glandular part at the end of their deferent duct. The vesicular gland is distinctly pyramidal while the prostate gland is relatively small. One of the striking features of this animal is the very substantial bulbourethral gland where it is cylindrical and extends along the whole of the pelvic portion of the urethra as shown here. In the horse, all four male accessory sex glands are present. It has a well-developed ampullary gland and relatively large and hollow vesicular gland with a thick muscular wall and a smooth surface. The prostate gland is composed only of the compact part. It is consists of two lateral lobes joined by a narrow isthmus that crosses the dorsal aspect of the urethra close to the neck of the bladder. The paired bulbourethral gland is projecting laterally and has a size of a walnut. It is also good to point that male birds do not possess accessory sex glands. Their ejaculate is composed of sperm and scant additional secretions produced by the testes and the walls of the ducts. Finally, we compare the male copulatory organ which is the penis. Penis can be classified basically into two, the vascular type and the fibroelastic type penis. The vascular type penis contains a lot of erectile tissue and little connective tissue so during erection, there is both an increase in length and diameter of the penis. Take a look at the cavernosa tissue and note the erectile tissue present. Vascular type is present in dogs, cats, and in horses. On the other hand, fibroelastic type of penis has a more connective tissue than the erectile tissue. Look at the extensive connective tissue at the cavernous tissue. Erection only results in increased length of the penis and no increase in the diameter of the penis. However, most of the increase in the penile length is usually due to the straightening of the sigmoid flexure. This type of penis is present in large and small ruminants as well as in pigs. As mentioned, the lengthening of the fibroelastic type penis is due to the straightening of the sigmoid flexure. The sigmoid flexure is the S-shaped structure as shown here. To compare, here is an illustration showing a boar and a bull reproductive tract. Boars are classified to have a pre-scrotal sigmoid flexure because the sigmoid flexure is present before the testicle. On the other hand, bulls and other ruminants are classified as post-scrotal because of the sigmoid flexure located after the testicle. But we can also compare the gross appearances and unique features of the penis of each animal. Let us begin with the animals with vascular type penis. In dogs, an os penis is present. Here is a picture of an erected penis of a dog and a radiograph to show the extent of the os penis. 
In cats, os penis can be present in most cases. And the striking feature of this animal is the presence of spikes in their glans penis. Note that female cats are considered as induced ovulators, which means that the act of breeding stimulates the release of eggs from their ovaries. These spikes, in a way, induce the female cat to ovulate. In stallion, the penis is extremely long. When non-erect, it is flaccid and contained within the prepuce. When erect, the penis doubles in length and thickness and the glance increases by three to four times. Here is an enlarged image of the glance penis of a stallion. Take note of the small mushroom-like urethral process present. Now let us discuss the animals with fibroelastic penis. Here is a picture showing the penis of a boar and a picture showing the spirally arranged glance penis. Here is a picture of a bull taken during intromission, and here is a picture of a penis of a ram. Take note of the long urethral process. Here is an image showing the urethral process of a sheep and a goat. Buck has a short urethral process while the ram has a very long and fine urethral process. In birds, the penis is also called as phallus. And the phallus can either be non-protrusible or protrusible. In a rooster or the male chicken, the phallus is characteristically non-protrusible. In drakes or male ducks or gander or the male goose, the phallus is protrusible as shown here. And that ends our discussion on the comparative anatomy of the male reproductive system.